Hey you guys, what's up? It's Hannah and welcome or welcome back to my channel. As you can tell by the title of today's video, we are going to be doing another monthly reading wrap up. So we are going to be going over every single book that I read in June. We have lots of books to talk about, so we're going to skip past any kind of long intros and just get started with the video. The first book that I read this month is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. This book has been on my TBR for so, so long and I'm so glad I finally read it. I half read, half listened to it because I also had the audiobook on Libby, so I was doing both. Um, the Invisible Life of Addie LaRue follows Addie LaRue, obviously, and she was born in the 1600s in this small town in France, and basically the premise of the book is that she just wanted more with her life. She didn't want to be tied down and married at a young age, live and die in the same like five miles of land, and she just like so desperately has this need to live life and see the world, and so this leads her to end up making a deal with a demon where she can live forever and the demon will get her soul when she is done with it. But the only caveat to this deal that he does not tell her until after she's made it is that people forget her after they see her. So she can talk to them and as soon as she turns away, she's forgotten. And she's lived life like this for 300 years. But then all of a sudden she meets a boy, a man. She meets a man and he remembers her. And those three little words, I remember you, like changed her whole life. You guys, this book was so good. It deserves all the hype it has. I'm not gonna lie, it did take me a little bit to really get into it. Like, I found it kind of slow paced at the beginning. I mean, she's lived for 300 years, there's a lot to add. So it was kind of slow paced at the beginning for me, but once I really got into it, and got to her meeting the guy that remembers her and just seeing it like keep going and why he remembers her. Oh my gosh, it's so, it's so, it's so good. And it really makes you think about you would really be willing to do anything for what you want, how you have to be so specific. It's very another like, you have to be careful what you wish for and like be specific what you wish for kind of thing. Five out of five, it deserves all the hype it has. The next book I don't have a physical copy of because I listened to the audiobook version and that is The Cheat Sheet by Sarah Adams. So The Cheat Sheet is a like childhood friends to lovers kind of story. Brie is this like ballet dancer. She's a teacher now because of something that happened to her that caused her to not be able to dance professionally. She teaches ballet in LA and her best friend Nathan is like the a big famous quarterback for this big team. She's been in love with Nathan for like ever, but she hasn't told him that. Nathan's been in love with her forever, hasn't told her that. They both think they're stuck in the friend zone and the whole book is Nathan has a plan to get out of the friend zone because something leads to them fake dating, which I'm not gonna spoil because that spoils part of the book. Like fake dating, friends to lovers, yada, yada, yada. This book wasn't my favorite. I thought Brie was really, really annoying because the beginning of the book is she's like, I'm not getting why all of his girlfriends don't like me, but like, it doesn't matter because I'm gonna be around so much longer than them. Like she's just very, pick me and very smug and I didn't find her a very likable character. I liked Nathan, I just like, he didn't have a lot of depth to him. Like there are very 2D characters in my opinion and I like very 3D characters. So I gave the book a 3 out of 5. I didn't hate it but it just definitely wasn't my favorite thing I've ever read. Alright, next up we have Conversation with Friends by Sally Rooney who is the same author of Normal People and I love Normal People. It's one of my favorite books so I was really hoping that I was gonna love Conversations with Friends because of how much I love normal people but I just didn't like it like at all I really did not enjoy it and I was really disappointed by that conversations with friends follows this girl named Frances and her and her friend Bobby are these like like writers slash like slam poetry performer kind of thingies. Bobby has them meet with a photographer to take pictures of them and do an article and the photographer's husband is an actor named Nick. Basically, long story short, Nick and Frances start an affair and Nick is also like 11 years older than her. Frances is very, like girl has some anxiety, some some real big anxiety and depression and that definitely shows throughout the book so you kind of see her thought process through that lens which is very interesting to read. I think Sally Rooney portrays her like mental health issues very well as someone with anxiety I'm like you that's how I feel all the time but it's just like obviously it's meant to feel real and like real world things but I just didn't find the book very engaging and it, I, it didn't hit the same way that normal people hit for me which made me kind of sad because I love normal people so I gave this book a one out of five because I really didn't like it but I really really wanted to maybe I just need to read it again when I'm older I don't know next up we have the summer of broken rules by K.L. Walter 
Um, I picked this book up completely on a whim just because the cover was pretty and I wanted a fun beach read and I am so glad I did. You guys, I loved this book so much. It's literally a book based off Taylor Swift songs. So there's so many Marvel and Taylor Swift references in this book and that made it so fun to read. It's so lighthearted and just, it feels like you're, you're reading like a teenage rom-com movie is what it feels like basically. This book follows Meredith Fox and her and her family and her closest family friends all go to Martha's Vineyard every summer and they have like these houses and this plot of land and like yada yada yada. They spend all their summers there. It's been tradition forever. But two years ago, Meredith's older sister Claire died. And then so for two years they haven't gone back and things just haven't been the same since Claire died because she lost her older sister. This year they're back, summer's up and running again and their older cousin is getting married. And so through that, Meredith starts a little friends with benefits with one of the groomsmen his name is Wit he's so cute I love Wit he is just so perfect um and a big plot of this game is their family plays a big game of assassin so Wit and Meredith make a secret little partnership in assassin and their secret little partnership turns into more and it's just it's such a cute it's like a perfect summer fling romance but the fling turns into more and it's just it's so cute and so fun and it's like this is what I want my summers to be. 5 out of 5 would recommend. I think I gave it a 4 out of 5 on Goodreads because I loved it but it wasn't like mind blowing. Um, but it's so cute. And then the final book that I read this month was Something Wilder by Christina Lauren. The best way I could describe this book is the song Something in the Orange by Zach Bryan is literally something wild. I picked this book up at Target on a whim just because again I've been in a big summer romance mood and Christina Lauren can do no wrong. I love Christina Lauren. Something Wilder follows Leo and Lily and Leo and Lily met 10 years ago when Leo came to Lily's family ranch and they met and they fell in love. And the book starts on that as the prologue. It's 10 years ago they met, they fell in love, Leo moves to the ranch to stay with her and that's where the prologue ends. Like they're about to have this great big life on this farm. Like, And then it cuts to 10 years later and you find out that Leo and Lily have not seen each other in 10 years and Leo straight up left Lily 10 years ago never came back and she doesn't know why he didn't come back. They haven't seen each other in 10 years. Their lives have drastically changed. And Lily has moved from working on her dad's ranch. That was her pride, her joy, everything. She loved that ranch. And she is now working at this kind of like adventure place where basically her job is to take tourists and they'll go off and rough it in like the canyons in Utah for a week straight. Like no running water, no service, none of that. Like they're straight up roughing it, they're cowboys, and they go on this fake treasure hunt. Leo's friend group, they're in like their 30s now, Leo's friend group does this thing every year where they all, they all take a turn every summer planning a vacation. And then so this year, one of his friends ends up planning his vacation to Lily's little adventure place and not knowing that Lily works there. So Leo and Lily meet again for the first time in 10 years and then they're just stuck in the middle of nowhere with each other for the next week with no service going on this big treasure hunt. And it's a second chance romance with the one bed trope. I loved it. This book was so good. Once I really got into it, I just, it was one of those books where you like instantly felt transported into the book. And there's also a miscommunication trope. So if you don't like the miscommunication trope, you are not, you might not like you might not like their story, but I usually don't like miscommunication trope and I really liked it. Overall, I would give this book like a 4 out of 5. It was really, really cute. I really, really liked it. And those 5 books conclude all the books that I read this month. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, maybe stick around if you want. I upload lifestyle and book videos. Um, we have a fun time around here. Alright, and then that is it for today's video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!